reality is straight as to what's going on, why it's going on, and offer you some ideas of how to solve the problem. So go to the website, link in the description, and check it out. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. Tonight, I'm going to talk about when you're dating somebody, you're getting to know somebody. Let's say you're getting into the next stage of your relationship. You guys are getting closer and closer. And now there's that question of sex. All right. Let's say that person has said to you, okay, I want to be exclusive with you. And now you're at the point where you you guys are going to have sex and everything like that. Next, let's say that the sex sucks, all right? And this happens. This does happen, you guys. You could be very attracted to somebody. They could be a good-looking person. They could be sexy as hell. But then once you get in the bedroom, forget it, okay? Total disappointment. Total disappointment. You might be with a guy that can't keep an erection, you may be with a woman who just lays there and doesn't move. I've heard that from so many guys that they've been with women that just sit there and lay there on the bed, just, you know, hoping something happens and they, they lay there like a, a dead duck, all right? So the thing is, you got to check out the sex game. Now, the thing is, a lot of people... When they pick the wrong partners, a lot of times this happens, they pick partners and they pick partners who have a great sex game, but are not relationship material. Like they're banging in the bedroom, but they suck in the relationship department or they're players. And this is why so many people, they get attached to the person because they're not in love with the person. They're in love with the sex they're having with the person because the sex is so good. It's, it's you know, down and dirty, so to speak. So they're in, really enjoying it. So the thing is, do you stay with somebody who is a good person, but their sex is horrible? They, they don't know what they're doing. Now, people say all the time, well, you could teach them. You could teach them what to do. Yes, some people, you can teach them, you know, if they're not experienced in sex, what to do. But some people are just flat out. They have no passion. They have no fire. And that's just them, you guys. That's just them. It's either in them or it's not to, to be fiery and try different things. So that's why you have to look at the sex appetite of the person that you're with. What is their sex appetite? What makes them tick? See, everybody's got something that makes them tick. Everybody's into something sexually. You know, so some guys are into booty. Some guys are into boobs. Uh, women, it could be the size of the penis or it could be, you know, the oral game. Does a guy have good oral game? And then there's some men that think that, oh, you know, if my oral game is great, you know, and I could eat her out and everything like that, you know, uh, that makes up for me having to have sex with her. Okay, well, there's a lot of women, you know, that they want the sex game as well and not just, you know, they want the intercourse. They don't just want the foreplay. And a lot of guys, they'll come back and they'll say stuff like, they'll say things like, oh, well, you know, women tell me all the time they love oral, you know, they love to be eaten out and everything like that. Yeah, some women do, okay? I'm not going to say they don't, but a lot of them liked to have intercourse and, and get wild with it, all right? Like, I had a good friend of mine who used to hook up with a lot of guys and she used to meet guys at three o'clock in the morning. They used to throw her up on the wall and she loved it. Okay. But that, that's what, that's what made her tick. That's why I'm saying everybody has something that makes them tick. Some people like when, you know, you have a dominant man and some people don't want a dominant man. So not only is the relationship between the two of you important, how you get along and are you compatible but also your sex game has to be compatible as well. So when you get to that point in your relationship and you're trying to figure out what it's all about, 
you know, you want to keep it spicy and keep things going. So how do you keep it spicy? You have spontane- spontaneity, you guys. All right. You keep it spontaneous. Men love spontaneous women. Okay. And women love that too. The thing with women is a lot of times women, especially if they're married, they have a lot of responsibility going on, whether they have children or they have a lot of other things going on in their world. They have the extra responsibility a lot of times when there's children involved. So it's a little difficult timing wise. You know, that's why a lot of men say, oh, you know, she she doesn't want to have sex all the time and she's always tired and everything like that. Well, you know what? Your your relationship is no longer you and her. It's you, her, and however many kids you may have. So you have to take that into consideration and you have to work out time for when you guys get together and plan it out. It may not be like when you were single and you could have sex on the train or you could have sex, you know, in the pool or you can have sex, you know, in a car with no kids in the back. So you have to kind of spice it up in other different ways. Now, let me just add one thing, okay? There's a lot of women that are dating a guy, they don't have the exclusivity, and they they think by laying it down on that guy, giving them fantastic sex in, in the beginning, okay, they think that that's how they're going to hook that guy, and that's not how it works, all right, you guys? That's not how it works. You could be a porn star in the bedroom and it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to make you his girlfriend or his wife. Why? Because you can get great sex anywhere because it's so abundant today. It's all over the place. So don't think because you're sitting there and you're giving them great, fantastic sex that all of a sudden, oh, he's he's going to make me his girlfriend because I'm giving him such great sex. No, that's not how you get into a relationship. Listen to me. It's all about timing. It's all about timing. That's why you, you, don't, you have sex at the right time. You don't have it too soon. You don't satisfy the appetite in the very beginning. Okay, it's like going to dinner. You don't have the main course as your first entree. All right, you have an appetizer, then you have the main course, and then you have dessert. Okay, so there's always a timing involved, and this is where people mess up is because they always they do things backwards. Okay, like they'll have great, fantastic sex in the beginning, and then they think the relationship follows, and very rarely does that happen. Can it happen? Yes. In some rare instances, it does happen. But most of the time, it works the other way. You have to work on the relationship, then you bring the sex into it. Once you're at the point that you guys are exclusive, and you've gotten to know each other, and you've built that emotional tie, yada, yada, yada. Now, another thing I want to add is this. If you are in a relationship, or and you are married, and let's just say you are having fantastic sex with your partner. You're really giving it to them good, so to speak, all right? And let's say that person ends up cheating on you. They didn't cheat on you because of your sex game. They cheated on you because of other reasons. Because number one, it's like I said in my cheating podcast, It could be because they're one of these people that always needs outside validation. It has nothing to do with you. That could be their basic character that they just don't have respect for you as they didn't for any of their exes. Okay, that's why I always say look at their, their track record. If their track record shows you they've been a cheater then a cheater they are, okay? And you have to accept that's that's who you got involved with. That's why you have to always look at this person before you go in deep. Move slowly. Always move slowly, you guys. So don't think that, you know, because you're giving somebody great sex that they're not going to get it from somebody else down the road. They could. They could, depending on their general character. What type of character do they have? Do they have morals and value your relationship and have respect for the relationship? Then you have a better chance of having somebody that's going to be loyal to you. So that's what, you know, it doesn't, 
necessarily mean it has to do anything with the sex game. But there have been cases where I've heard from guys that they've been in relationships with women and they haven't been satisfied with the sex with the women that they were with and they've looked for outside people to have sex with because they weren't getting something that they wanted from their partner and maybe they couldn't even communicate to their partner what they were into or what makes them tick. That's why you want to make your partner feel comfortable. The more you make your partner feel comfortable, the more they're going to open up to you. So how do you make somebody feel comfortable? You don't attack them. You don't nag them. You, you, you respect them. You respect their opinion. You be kind and understanding, and then people start to open up. And when they open up to you, then you are getting closer, and that will bring the two of you closer. A lot of times, too, people also cheat when they're mad at their partner. That's their way of getting back at their partner, okay? So that's why, you know, you want to keep things very close between the two of them. Not to say, not to say that there aren't people that... Someone could be involved with, and you could be a great person, you could be kind and understanding, and they could still go outside the relationship and cheat on you. There are cases where that could happen, and it doesn't necessarily mean you did anything wrong. Each each person is different, and you, you, like I said, it boils down to their basic character. You got to look at that person, look at their their life history, their childhood history, how they view relationships, how they were brought up thinking what is a healthy relationship. That's what gives you an idea of who you're dealing with, okay? If you're dealing with a guy that's one of these kind of alpha type of males, macho male, you know, maybe his father was a cheater Maybe his friends are all cheaters. Maybe they laugh about it and it's a joke. That could be somebody that you is a red flag. You have to watch out for somebody like that, that although they're sitting there and they're telling you, oh, but I'm not like that. I'm not like these other guys. I'm not like them. You have to just see. That's why I always tell you guys, you got to ask them about their prior relationships because when people talk, you have to listen. And when you listen to what people say, they actually give themselves up. So, you, you know, the more questions you ask them, the more they reveal to you who they are, who they are. Half these people today that are out in the dating world don't even know who they're with. You know, half these people, the, these women or that have gotten murdered, like you see on Dateline or 48 Hours, they had no idea who they were married to or who they were dealing with because they didn't study the person to see what is this person's general character, okay? And even for your own safety, to know what kind of person you're dealing with. Are they a violent person? You know, are they a narcissist? You guys, you, you, gotta, you gotta pay attention, You have to pay attention. But I wanted to just basically touch upon the sex aspect of being compatible. Because a lot of my podcasts, I talk about the relationship aspect. But the sex aspect, it could be important as well. I had a good friend. She was dating this guy. The relationship aspect was going okay. They were getting along. They were going out on dates. They were doing different things. They were going to wine tasting. They were going to Broadway shows. Everything was great when it came to the date, you know, going out and do things. She had a great time. When it came to the sex game, forget it. Forget it, okay? She said to me, oh, you know, uh, his penis is like a pencil. She's like, I don't even feel him. And I'm like, oh, boy. Uh, (laughs) I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. And she said, you know, it's just horrible. I'm just not satisfied. And, you know, he's not good in the bedroom and everything like that. And I'm like, listen, you guys have to work together and, you know, try to be satisfied in other ways if you can. Okay. Okay. This, this particular guy that she was with, he was a big bodybuilder. He used to take steroids and all that, okay? Looking at him on the outside, he looked great. 
he looked great. He was a good looking guy. But um, as far as the bedroom game, it sucked. It sucked. So she went out with him for maybe two, three years. And she used to tell me, well, you know, there's more to a relationship than just sex. You know, it's not just all about sex. So everything went well for a while till they finally got to a point where they broke up because they had a disconnect. They had other problems as well because he had a temper, but um, they ended up breaking up. And she said to me, she's like, it was such a relief when I broke up with him because I really was not completely satisfied. Now that's her particular story. Everybody is different, you guys. But when you get involved with somebody, you want to make sure that they could fulfill you sexually as well as the emotional aspect of a relationship. I hope that helps you. If it did, please hit the subscribe button and share and have a great day. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz. I want to tell you about my two books that are on Amazon, okay? You can download them free with the trial membership from Kindle. The first book is Regain Your Power. If you're in a relationship and you feel like your partner has all the control in the relationship, maybe you're walking around on eggshells, you're afraid to approach them, it's going to tell you how to regain your power and, and be happy in the relationship, okay? And what you may be doing wrong, and that's why your partner has all the control in the relationship. The other book is he's Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time. There's a lot of people that are dating someone or in a relationship with somebody who's not really vested in the relationship. And we, we often are confused as to whether our partner really likes us or is into us or wants a future with us. And this book is going to give you signs and red flags of whether your partner is into you or he's just basically drifting and wasting your time. So go to Amazon and download the Kindle free trial membership. Doesn't cost you anything. And check it out. It may help you. Okay, and have a great day.